Oh, here she is. Don't you just hate those Pokemons? What the hell's your game? Oh, sorry, dear. I thought you were a Pokemon. A what? A Pokemon. Well, if you're not, you bloody should be. Ugly bastard. Oh look, Len's favourite number. Seven! Hello, who is it? It's me, Craig Ribble Hallward. Well, I know a Craig David, but he's got a proper job and doesn't just sit on his ass and judge people all day. Anyway, how do I know you? Remember the other day I gave you some advice? Is everything all right, officer? It's nothing to worry about, sir. It's just a routine check. And five, six, seven, eight. Oh. So, any feedback? Darling, I hate to say this, but your arms were all over the shop. Your legs darling, completely out of time. You were pigeon-toed. A complete and absolute dance disaster. Mm, please yourself, then. husband and I thought the other day, we're tired of where we live and we, we want to move. So we thought we'd go to the estate agents and said, we want to move. It's like you do, isn't it? Anyway, so the lovely lady there, she showed us these properties. They were dire. So we said, no, don't want them. Anyway, she said, hang on a minute. I said, hang on a minute. I've got a lovely property you will adore. Anyway, we went round. In every room of this house, there was mirrors on the wall. Every single wall. My husband turned to me and said, Do you know what? I can really see myself in this house. <laughs> Hello, who is it? Hi, Timmy. It's Petrie Hoskins. Do you remember from season one? What do you want? So I was just passing by and I thought I'd pop in and have another chat on your bed with you. Not after your poor hit rate last time, you're not, love. Now shove off. Craig Greville Horwood. Cheers, thank you for coming on my bed. Thank you for the invitation. I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. It's very comfy. Christ! She likes the sound of her own voice. <laughs> Craig Greville Hallward. 
She's fancy. Tell me about the name. Oh, the name. It's my real name, and the Revel is my middle name, and that's my grandfather's first name. He was Revel Campbell Horwood, and my father was Philip Revel Horwood, and then I just continued the line of it. Oh, sorry, you got really confused. I meant Craig. Oh. Well, Craig was just a common name in 1965, sadly. You said it. That's all that amounts to. I've never worked with such a common lot in my life. You're from a criminal background, aren't you? (laughs) Yes, I suppose I am, really. Well, uh, I think there was a chap, if this is what you're talking about. I don't know. Moses Hallward, I think, who stole five pounds or something. And then uh, he was put on a ship to Australia. Mm, yeah. That's where I'm going. Yeah. Along with all the other common criminals <laughs> yes, away from this country. All the other convex. Yeah, you found your way back, didn't you? I did. And look at me now, darling. Yeah. I'm a huge... More criminal huge, than ever, girl. A huge, huge star. Well, you say so. huge. <laughs> Hip-wise. Yeah, hip-wise. I said Tummy-wise. <laughs> you said it. I always was worried about my hips. You know, I wanted to have an operation to get rid of them. Mm, I would. Look in the mirror, blubber butt. This is what I've read. Don't believe everything you read. Okay, well, Unless it's in my book. Correct. <laughs> so you're not enjoy- you want to get out there, you want to be a performer. So you turn to prostitution, a rent boy. Slut. I mean, I've only read this on the internet. I'm not... Don't shoot the messenger. Or in this case, don't shoot no, over no, no. the messenger. No, it is... I said it. It is true. I sold my wares mm. for dance lessons. You're just a whore. And that's how I paid. Who hasn't done that? Well, that's how I paid for my dance lessons Can, Would you Melbourne. find it offensive if I asked your tariff? It was... <laughs> it was a year of dance lessons, so add that up, darling. We take the cash, we cash the check, we show them what they want to see. In your rent world... Yeah. At the end of it, did you get to the end of the bed and say, score me? And did they hold up? <laughs> when did Strictly Come Dancing come knocking on your door? That was in May 2004. My agent said, uh, the BBC have rung and they want to screen test you for this new show they're doing called Strictly Come Dancing. It's about celebrities learning to dance with professional dancers. And I said, it sounds like a car crash. I had an audition, a screen test, and they put a little monitor in front of me, and they're filming me, and then uh, they said, oh, can you react to it? React, react, react. And I said, well, yeah, actually, I mean, that woman can't even walk down the stairs. And I said, when she got on the dance floor, she was absolutely appalling. And I said, whoever that dancer is has got the bowed legs I've ever seen done. You could drive a semi-trailer through those legs. They're just so, I said, I don't know how he's professional. And then they said, can you sum this whole thing up in um, three words? And I said, yes, dull. Dull, dull. I got the job, and um, and then I did it. And the first words out of my mouth were dull, dull, dull. And of course, that's when the audience booed me. But the people that I was watching that particular day at the screen test was Natasha Koplinski and Brendan Cole, oh, of course, who wow. went on to win the first series. Don't mention that name. I know. Just saying. So, uh, so that was. So he liked fun. you in the beginning. What, Brendan? Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't hear my audition though, did he? <laughs> so uh, it was it was all due to that. Your first judges were Bruno, Len, Arlene, Arlene and you. Yeah. Now talk me through those. Okay. Bruno, bump and grind boy, better on a pole. Len, an adjudicator for ballroom and Latin, doesn't believe the Argentine tango is a real dance. That's why I have um, run-ins with him all the time. Uh, Arlene, she was a laugh, you know, and I like the fact that she was an old, old woman lusting out to young, delicious boys. Now what about Bruce? Nice to see you, to see you! He is a legend, number one. Number two, he is the only real remaining song and dance man of his era, which I think is fantastic. Mm. He's also loved by the nation, but you get to a point in your life where you want to spend time with your family and you want to retire and Mm. stop working. And you have to choose, I guess, a good time to do that. But is there ever a good time to do it? And I think... I don't know. You know, that's after what 10 wanted, years of that's Strictly... That's what I wanted to ask you. Well, after 10 years of Strictly... <laughs> thank you, darling. Yes, I'll be put out to pasture at some stage, but not just yet, darling. <laughs> Let me get to my 52nd <laughs> <Talk> birthday. <laughs> Talk <please>. about <laughs> long overdue. <laughs> Baby, 
change your 50 year old mattress? You're nasty. It's a disaster. No. Disaster. Do you put the voice on? Uh, no, not entirely. I think it's, it's a voice from when I've been drunk. <laughs> I'm a bit drunk now. Oh. You should know it f***ing well, girl. No. <laughs> Well, if you read everything you believe, if you believe if you everything, believe, oh, everything oh, you read in the papers, drunk, she's drunk. it looks as though we're going to be able to trip the Thailand Festival. <laughs> Arlene went. What was that like backstage? Was that a big deal? It was a massive deal because what well, she rang me actually when she found out. She said, uh, "I'm not coming back." I said, "I mean, is this your choice or their choice?" They said, "She said their choice," and I said, we don't know to this day really. What actually happened? They just wanted a change of cars. So a change of scenery. You like your food? I love my food. So when you're on... Can you tell? Mm, you're not blind, dear. Well, um, I was anorexic once, but... Uh, bloody hell. That a... You want to revisit there, girl. <laughs> so listen, when you're in front of the camera, you've got mm. £10, don't you? Yeah, that's right, and 10 How many years. cameras were actually on you when we're watching you? A lot. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Chin up, darling. Both of them. Who did you hate, celebrity-wise? Well, I didn't really hate anyone, but I disliked how my relationship finished with Jan Ravens. I didn't like that very much, because she blamed me for going out. She said she came up on live television, this is your fault, this is your fault. I thought it's not my fault, people didn't vote for you, they just don't like you, darling. I don't like you. Mm. And then I tried at the BBC bars to go, all right, darling, you know, just to be very, very polite, polite. And, and you normal. were drunk as well, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Should have been. I was on my way to the bar to get drunk, but I should have been. Telling me. But um, then she just screamed and started crying. <laughs> And then her husband came up and started screaming at me and literally pushed me three times in the chest like this, screaming at me, and pushed me into the BBC bar and then I likened that to um, an attack, to a physical assault. There was a special relationship on your programme. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I, no, I don't agree with that. And when it yeah, and when it comes. Is that a good impression? Yeah, that was a good impression. Yeah, you just have to have one boob lower than the other, though. <laughs> <Get away with. laughs> so, uh, she was wonderful. I loved her. Whatever in love means. <laughs> and as much as we had our tete -tete tets and our little arguments and things like that, I always thought that she was very, very funny. You haven't got a zero, so you might as well give us one and have done with it. <laughs> Because you're so different. It was like she's Lauren and Hardy. Yeah, correct. Because she's as wide as you are tall. Yeah. She hates cocks as much as you love them. Yes. <laughs> she's very anti-gay. Yeah. And yet you've got this lovely relationship with her. Because we don't speak about any sexual scenarios and we don't talk about religion. We talk about what we can achieve together in that way, you know, as um, entertaining people and stuff and having a laugh. And we do actually get on. I mean, the whole panto thing came about, uh, and the whole double act thing came about over a glass of Savvy B at the bar. <laughs> What's happening now, girl? Len. Len is, is leaving. leaving. <laughs> oh, Christ. Do you not oh. get on with Len? No. I fight with him. I've been fighting with him. Yeah, for but. 13 years. Oh. On screen, but you must love yeah, him on screen. Yeah, I do off. It's a hard position to fill, as we've discovered. I said that to my husband last night. Yeah. <laughs> so who do you think is going to be the new captain of the ship? I really don't know, but I hope it's no one from the show. I would like it to be someone that is from the ballroom Latin world. That would be good. Unknown. The new contestants. Well, my money is on Danny. He's a gorgeous actor in Holly Goat. Holly Oaks. Holly Goats. Holly Oaks. I've had too much to drink now. Who hasn't? Who hasn't? Come on, Sidley! <laughs> have you had surgery? Yes. What have you had? I've had my nose done and I've had my tits done. Oh, cry. I hope you kept the receipt. <laughs> I knew I should never have done this. <laughs> Who doesn't? Let's cheers. And do you mind if we do a selfie on this bed? Go on then. Let me get my camera! <laughs> <laughs> Should have done. Yeah. Hey, Arco! So I'm going to be talking like you next, Strickland. Who isn't? Should have it's done. It's if that all Isn't the it? catchphrases aren't coming out. I know. You've Let's got, have like, a loads. go. All right, I'm ready. We look hot, actually. Yeah, you look lovely, but I want your head forward. Oh, not much. I said that's my husband oh. last night. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, oh, lovely. Here we go, girl. Cheers. Do you know what? I love your outfit. Yes, well, thank you. I well, let me put it this way. It takes me back. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> I wish it would leave me there. Um, I said it. This is my comedy mm. clip slot. Okay. I picked one. I, I think she's quite similar to you. All right. Mm. Sounds ominous. It's um, a radio show, and it's a lady, and she's interviewing... Danny LaRue. Oh my god. Here we go. Don't put your drink down. Oh, you'll you'll oh. need it. <laughs> will I? You'll need it. I probably will. So let me pop her on. It started off quite calmly. The stars of the show said they'd been intimidated by equity and were frightened to appear on stage in case they jeopardised their careers. You've been frightened. I have. You've been frightened. I've been frightened of jeopardising their Intimidated. People outside the Phoenix Theatre hoping till the last moment for a show. So Stephen Kendall Lane invited them in so he could explain why the show wasn't going Ooh, ahead. This is why it hasn't. Yes, took a back seat. Where does stars like Lionel Blair have sent messages of support? He would have only sent a message of support, wouldn't he? Yes. Female impersonator Danny LaRue turned up in person. He turned up. It started off quietly enough as he put his case for Sunday openings. I'm working, thank God, and I have done many Sunday nights most of my life. Oh, this, but Sunday nights? One of the British clowns of theatre. He's one of the British clowns of theatre. He was. Give me a stage work. Give him a stage and work, darling. Nights. Nights. give church nights. Does God give... Did he give takes nights off <laughs> at the church? We are entertainers. We must not be dictated to. That's I true. I then asked what I thought was a reasonable she question. thought this was reasonable. And this is what followed. Could it be said that you're muscling in on the publicity that this should I don't called? need publicity, my dear. I'm a very big star. star. <laughs> you know, look, it's like you that way. Oh you my. don't need publicity. I'm a very huge star. I know. Don't switch it off, dear. Don't switch it off, dear. I'm, I'm not. I'm loving it, she said. I'm used to talking to amateurs. Oh, well, you're not I talking to one well, now. So you're not now, talking to one now, she said. It is years of experience and bloody tears is talking into this no. piece of crap. Oh. I don't need Quote, I am Quote it. Up for three years. She's booked up for three years. Find out who wants to book me. I am going all out. I'm an international star. In that I case, why are you so touchy about what I just asked you? I think Because you said, question. am I wanting publicity? I don't I, uh, need. I asked you if you were muscling in on publicity the, here. They, they answered you. you. The they answered you. you, my dear. The audience answered you, my dear. Your, your, stupidity, your stupidity and your ignorance and your bad manners. I oh, love it. Oh, it's like you are. On Strictly, isn't it? It's just idea. like me on Strictly. Should have done. Where do you think I get it from? say that I have felt more welcome in my life. Mr. Larue then made some more rude comments about I bet he did. You f***ing probably. Oh my God! Yeah, well he does say that word. Who doesn't? Having had both my microphone and my arm strongly grabbed by an irate female impersonator. Who hasn't had that? Irate female impersonator. However, Sunday theatre openings continues this week. Oh, female impersonators. Mm, talking of female impersonators, I'll give her something she can judge. It's all you have to do. Ah, boy dancing boy! It's a Timmy toilet show. There's a future for the children without a mondo, extra mondo. We want it's a shame it isn't strictly no dancing. We will restore all the laughter. Hashtag silly bitch. It's a complete and absolute disaster, darling. I need to go and judge something worth judging. You said it.